आई एम डॉक्टर गीतांजलि बड़े वर्किंग एज एन असिस्टंट प्रोफेसर इन द डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ फिजियोलॉजी दिस इज मॉड्यूल नंबर सेवेंटीन गैस ट्रांसपोर्ट एंड पलमनरी सर्कुलेशन द स्पेसिफिक लर्निंग ऑब्जेक्टिव्स फॉर दिस मॉड्यूल आर एट द एंड ऑफ दिस लेक्चर स्टूडेंट शुड बी एबल टू डिस्क्राइब फिजियोलॉजिक एनाटॉमी ऑफ पलमनरी सर्कुलेटरी सिस्टम डिस्क्राइब कैरेक्टरिस्टिक्स ऑफ पलमनरी सर्कुलेशन डिस्क्राइब रीजनल वेरिएशन ऑफ सर्कुलेशन एंड वेंटिलेशन परफ्यूजन रेशो कंपेयर द कंपोजिशन ऑफ अल्वेलर एयर इंस्पायर्ड एंड एक्सपायर्ड एयर लिस्ट द मेथड्स ऑफ ट्रांसपोर्ट ऑफ ऑक्सीजन इन ब्लड ड्रॉ एंड एक्सप्लेन ऑक्सीजन हिमोग्लोबिन डिसोसिएशन क अदर ऑब्जेक्टिव आर लिस्ट द वेज इन विच सी ओ टू इज ट्रांसपोर्टेड इन ब्लड एंड क्लासिफाइड टाइप्स ऑफ हाइपोक्सिया विथ एग्जाम्पल्स द लंग हैज टू टाइप्स ऑफ सर्क्युलेशन फर्स्ट इज हाई प्रेशर एंड लो फ्लो सर्क्युलेशन इट सप्लाइज सिस्टेमिक आर्टेरियल ब्लड टू द ट्रकिया द ब्रॉन्क्यूल ट्री इंक्लूडिंग टर्मिनल ब्रॉन्क्यूल्स द सपोर्टिंग टिश्यू ऑफ द लंग इंक्लूडिंग मस्कुलेक्चर एंड सेकेंड वन इज अ फ्लो लो प्रेशर हाई फ्लो सर्क्युलेशन दैट सप्लाइज व्हीनस ब्लड फ्रॉम ऑल पार्ट्स ऑफ द बॉडी टू द अल्वेलर कैपिलरीज वेर ऑक्सीजन इज एडेड एंड कार्बन डाइऑक्साइड इज रिमूव्ड द पलमरी आर्टरी विच रिसीव्स ब्लड फ्रॉम द राइट वेंट्रिकल एंड इट्स आर्टेरियल ब्रांचेस कैरी ब्लड टू द अल्वेलर कैपिलरीज फॉर गैस एक्सचेंज एंड द पलमनरी वेन्स देन रिटर्न द ब्लड टू द लेफ्ट एट्रीयम टू बी पम्प बाय द लेफ्ट वेंट्रिकल into systemic circulation the characteristics of pulmonary artery and its branches are first one is it is thin with a wall thickness only 1/3 that of the aorta its branches are very short and have large diameter their walls are thin and distensible and because of all these characteristics pulmonary arterial circulation has a large compliance and it can accommodate large volume of blood without much rise in pressure pressure in the right ventricle and the systemic vasculature are as follows the right ventricular pressure is about 25 mm of mercury and the diastolic pressure averages about 0 to 1 mm of mercury values that are only 1/5 of those of the left ventricle pressures in the pulmonary circulation are the systolic pressure is only 25 mm of mercury diastolic pressure is 8 mm of mercury while mean arterial pressure is 15 mm of mercury the mean pulmonary and capillary pressure is about 10 mm of mercury whereas oncotic pressure is 25 mm of mercury so inward the resulting inward directed pressure gradient of 15 mm of mercury which is very less will keep the alveoli free of fluid the mean pressure in the left atrium and the major pulmonary veins averages about 2 mm of mercury in the recumbent human being it varies from as low as 1 mm of mercury and it can be as high as 5 mm of mercury gravity has its effect on the pulmonary circulation circulation in upright position the upper portions of the lungs are very well above the level of heart and bases are below it so it has effect on it so upper portions receive less blood supply as compared to the basal portions so gravity has the effect on pulmonary ventilation also in upright position the intra pleural pressure at apex is less negative as compared to the base of the lungs it has the effect and it leads to more distension of alveoli at the apex at and less ventilation per minute as compared to the basis of the lungs ventilation perfusion ratio is the ratio of pulmonary ventilation to the pulmonary blood flow it is also called as vp ratio 
and the ventilation perfusion ratio for the whole lung at rest is about 0.8. Gravity also has the effect on alveolar uh, ventilation perfusion ratio and marked differences are observed in various parts of normal lung due to the gravity. As noted above, both ventilation and perfusion decline from the base to the apex linearly in upright position, but VP ratio is high at apex of the lungs. The pressure exerted by any one gas in a mixture of gases is called as partial pressure of that gas in that mixture and it is directly proportional to concentration of gas molecules. It is given by the formula that is partial pressure is equal to concentration of dissolved gas divided by solubility coefficient. As carbon dioxide is mo more soluble than oxygen that is it is 20 times as soluble as oxygen, the partial pressure of CO2 is less than 1 20th of that exerted by oxygen. Gas diffuses from areas of high pressure to areas of low pressure with the rate of diffusion depends upon concentration of gradient and nature of the barrier between the two areas. When a mixture of gases comes in contact with a liquid and equilibrates with it, each gas in the mixture dissolves in the liquid to an extent determined by its partial pressure and its solubility in the fluid. In the steady state, inspired air mixes with the alveolar gas, it replaces the oxygen that has entered the blood and dilute the CO2 that has entered the alveolar. A part of this mixture is expired, the O2 content of the alveolar gas then falls and its CO2 content rises until the next inspiration. Because the volume of gas in the alveoli is about 2 liter at the end of expiration which is also called as functional residual capacity, each 350 ml increment of inspired and expired air has relatively little effect on partial pressure of oxygen and carbon dioxide. Indeed, the composition of alveolar gas remains remarkably constant not only at rest but also under a variety of other conditions. Diffusion of gases takes place across alveolar capillary membrane. Blood takes only 0.75 seconds to travel the pulmonary capillaries at rest. The time required for each gas to reach equilibrium with blood depends upon the reaction with substances in blood. The volume of gas taken up by blood is flow limited in case of nitric oxide. Nitric oxide does not react and reaches equilibrium in about 0.1 second. In this situation, the amount of nitric oxide taken up is not limited by diffusion, but it depends upon the amount of blood flowing through the pulmonary capillaries. So, its uptake is called as flow limited. The take, uh, take up of this gas can be also be the diffusion limited and in case of carbon monoxide. Carbon monoxide is taken up by hemoglobin in the red blood cells at such a high rate that partial pressure of carbon monoxide in the capillaries stays very low and equilibrium is never achieved in 0.75 seconds in pulmonary capillaries. Therefore, the transfer of carbon monoxide is not limited by perfusion at rest and instead it is diffusion limited. So, uh, another way of uh, transport is perfusion limited. Oxygen is intermediate between nitric oxide and carbon monoxide and it is taken up by hemoglobin, but much less avidly than carbon monoxide and it reaches equilibrium with capillaries in blood in about 0.3 seconds. Thus, its uptake is perfusion limited. Diffusing capacity is the volume of gas that will diffuse through the respiratory membrane each minute for a partial pressure difference of 1 millimeter of mercury. Diffusing capacity for carbon monoxide is taken as the index of diffusing capacity as its uptake is diffusion 
limited. Normal value for diffusing capacity of for carbon monoxide is 25 ml per minute per millimeter of mercury. It increases during exercise up to three folds in normal persons. The PO2 of alveolar air is 100 millimeter of mercury and that of blood entering capillaries is 40 millimeter of mercury. Oxygen diffuses across the respiratory membrane and PO2 of blood rises to 97 millimeter of mercury. It falls to 95 millimeter of mercury in the aorta. Similarly, partial pressure for of CO2 of venous blood is 46 millimeter of mercury and that of alveolar air is 40, 40 millimeter of mercury. CO2 moves from blood to the alveoli and PCO2 of blood leaving the lungs is 40 millimeter of mercury. Oxygen diffuses from alveoli into pulmonary blood and then gets transported to tissue capillaries. It is transported in two forms, first is combined with hemoglobin and second is dissolved in plasma. So what is the role of hemoglobin in oxygen transport? About 97 percent of the oxygen transported from lungs to the tissue is in, in the form of combination with hemoglobin which is present in RBCs. Hemoglobin is made up of four subunits. Each subunit contains a heme moiety which is a porphyrin ring complex having one atom of ferrous ion. Each of the four ion atoms in hemoglobin can reversibly bind with one oxygen molecule. When PO2 is high as in pulmonary capillaries, oxygen binds with hemoglobin. But when PO2 is low as in tissue capillaries, oxygen is released from hemoglobin. Oxygen hemoglobin dissociation curve relates percentage saturation of the oxygen carrying capacity of hemoglobin to the partial pressure of oxygen. This curve has a characteristic st stigmoid shape because of the combination of the first heme in the hemoglobin molecule with oxygen increases the affinity of second heme for oxygen and oxygenation of second increases the affinity for the third and it increases so on. So that the affinity of hemoglobin for the fourth oxygen molecule is many times than that for the first. It leads to sigmoid, sigmoid shape of the oxygen hemoglobin dissociation curve. Now what are the factors that shift the oxygen hemoglobin curve to the right? That means it increases release of the oxygen to the tissue. First is the increased carbon dioxide concentration, then increased temperature, decreased pH of blood and increased 2, 3, 5, by phosphoglycerate in RBCs, all these conditions lead to release of more oxygen to the tissues which are observed in exercise. When blood is equilibrated with 100 percent of oxygen, the normal hemoglobin becomes 100 percent saturated. When fully saturated, each gram, each gram of normal hemoglobin contains 1.39 ml of oxygen. However, blood normally contains small amounts of inactive hemoglobin derivatives and the major value in vivo is lower that is 1.34 ml of oxygen. In arterial blood where hemoglobin is 97 percent saturated, oxygen content is 19.4 ml per 100 ml in per 100 ml. In venous blood where hemoglobin is 75 percent saturated, oxygen content is 14.4 ml per 100 ml. Thus 5 ml of oxygen is transported from the lungs to the tissues by 100 ml of blood. So what is the Bohr effect? The decrease in oxygen affinity of hemoglobin when the pH of blood falls is called as Bohr effect. Only 3 percent oxygen is transported to the tissues in dissolved state. At PO2 of 95 mm of mercury, 0.29 ml of oxygen is dissolved in plasma. At PO2 of 40 mm of mercury, only 0.12 ml oxygen remains dissolved in plasma. So, 0.17 ml of O2 is transported in the dissolved state to the tissues by each 100 ml of arterial blood. Carbon dioxide is transported in blood in various forms like in dissolved state as second one is 
बायकर एज बायकार्बोनेट आयन्स एंड थर्ड इज इन कॉम्बिनेशन विथ हिमोग्लोबिन एंड प्लाज्मा प्रोटीन्स इन द डिजॉल्व स्टेट ओनली पॉइंट थ्री एम एल दैट इज सेवन पर्सेंट ऑफ टोटल सी ओ टू इज ट्रांसपोर्टेड बाय हंड्रेड एम एल ऑफ ब्लड द अमाउंट ऑफ कार्बन मोनॉक्साइड कार्बन डाइऑक्साइड डिजॉल्व इन प्लाज्मा एट फोर्टी फाइव मिलीमीट ऑफ मर्क्यूरी इज टू पॉइंट सेवन एम एल पर डेज लीटर एंड द अमाउंट ऑफ कार्बन डाइऑक्साइड डिजॉल्व इन प्लाज्मा एट फोर्टी मिलीमीट ऑफ मर्क्यूरी इज टू As bicarbonate ions, it is also transported, and this mode of transport accounts for seventy percent of carbon mono, carbon dioxide transported from tissues to the lung. The CO two that diffuses into red blood cells is rapidly hydrated to H two CO three, and because of the presence of carbon, carbonic anhydrase, the H two CO three dissociates to H plus and H CO three minus ions. and the h plus ions are buffered primarily by hemoglobin while the hco3 minus enters the plasma and about 70 by 70% of hco3 minus form in the red cells enter the plasma the excess of bicarbonate ions leaves the red cells in exchange for chloride and this is called as chloride shift this process is mediated by an ion exchanger one which is the major membrane protein in the red blood cells because of this the chloride content of red blood cells in venous blood is significantly greater than that in arterial blood so what is the haldane effect combination of oxygen with hemoglobin in the lungs causes hemoglobin to become stronger acid and it displaces carbon mono carbon dioxide from blood into alveoli it is called as haldane effect carbon dioxide reacts directly with plasma proteins and amine radicals of hemoglobin molecule to form carbamino hemoglobin this is a reversible reaction and accounts for 20 to 30% of carbon dioxide transported by blood hypoxia is deficiency of oxygen at tissue level it could be due to inadequate supply of oxygen to the tissues or inability of the tissues to utilize available oxygen there are various types of hypoxia and these are first is hypoxic hypoxia second is anemic hypoxia third is stagnant hypoxia and hypoxic hypoxia hypoxic hypoxia when po2 of arterial blood is reduced it is called as hypoxic hypoxia The causes for hypoxia hypoxia are low PO2 in inspired air, hypoventilation, and diffusion defects at lungs or ventilation perfusion mismatch. The common examples are difficulty in breathing at high altitudes. For hypoxic hypoxia, the treatment is oxygen therapy, and it is the best treatment of choice. In anemic hypoxia, PO2 of arterial blood is normal, but hemoglobin to carry oxygen is inadequate. Conditions that lead to anemic hypoxia are anemia, then carbon monoxide poisoning, presence of altered hemoglobin like methyl hemoglobin, and the treatment of choice for anemic hypoxia is oxygen therapy. It increases dissolved oxygen. and for carbon monoxide poisoning also it is the best treatment and oxygen is given in hyperbaric form as carbon monoxide has high affinity which is 2 10 times greater than the affinity for oxygen and it will replace the carbon monoxide next type of hypoxia is stagnant hypoxia which occurs due to decreased blood flow to the tissues it is seen in heart failure shock and vascular obstruction Oxygen therapy is not much useful in this type of hypoxia as underlying cause needs to be treated. In histotoxic hypoxia tissue cannot ut- utilize oxygen despite of normal oxygen supply. It is present in cyanide poisoning and severe diphtheria. Oxygen therapy is not much useful in this type of hypoxia. However, hyperbaric oxygen therapy is beneficial. 
Hypoxia has its effects at cellular, tissue and organ level. It can alter cellular transcription factors and thus protein expression. It has effect on brain function and produces symptoms like dizziness, drowsiness and headache. It can affect ventilation. Long term hypoxia can result in cell and tissue death. The summary for this module is the pressure gradient in pulmonary circular system is much less than that in systemic circulation. Both ventilation and perfusion are greater at base of the lung as compared to apex. But ventilation perfusion ratio is lower at base as compared to apex. Partial pressures of oxygen and carbon dioxide at alveoli and pulmonary capillary determine net flow of these gases. The amount of oxygen present in blood is determined by the amount dissolved and amount bound to hemoglobin. One molecule of hemoglobin binds with four molecules of oxygen. CO2 in blood is rapidly converted to H2CO3 due to activity of enzyme carbonic anhydrase. It also readily forms carbamino compounds with blood proteins. It is also transported in dissolved form. Hypoxia is deficiency of oxygen at tissue level. There are four types of hypoxia and they are hypoxic hypoxia, anemic hypoxia, stagnant hypoxia and histotoxic hypoxia. Oxygen therapy is most useful in hypoxic hypoxia. The web links and the additional reading material is provided here and thanks for this module.